Hello everyone, in today's video we're going to be continuing our quick little brief look at all the different types of approaches. We're going to be trying one of the ones that I'm not really a big fan of, but at the same time is it adds a pretty fun challenge to things, and that is the VOR approach. So uh, what is a VOR approach? A VOR approach is a non-precision approach where basically you're going to use some sort of reference VOR radial in order to guide yourself safely down to earth. Now I'm not a huge fan of these because uh, like I said they're non-precision, but they're also kind of fun in their own sort of, you got to kind of work it out sort of a way. So I think you folks are going to like it. So let's go ahead and take a look at well, what we're going to be tackling here today. So this is the VOR Runway 5 approach for Groton, New London. Uh, this particular one is kind of neat because it uses a VOR that is at the airport. Uh, many VOR approaches do not feed feature uh, VOR stations that are at the airport. You could have a situation, for example, we could be down air at Hampton and trying to use that radial to line us up desperately up at the runway. So fortunately for us, like I said, uh, we can get away with this pretty easily today. So I'm not gonna panic too much. So what do we need to know? So like I said, we always try to approach this thing from a simple perspective. Uh, the first thing we're gonna be interested in is the frequency, which is gonna be 110.85. Let's go ahead and start by getting that pre-programmed right away. We don't wanna waste any time on that. We're gonna go ahead and check it to make sure it's accurate. Now, Golf off Oscar November is definitely the correct answer here. Next thing we know is uh, we wanna go ahead and double check to see what approach or direction we're gonna be coming at here. Our approach course is gonna be 0027. That is also going to be our radial for this particular flight as well. So let's go ahead and uh, synchronize our heading bug real quick. Come a little to this side. I'm gonna go ahead and switch my CDI mode down here at the bottom. I'm gonna go ahead and hide this real fast so you folks can see. Switch it over. Um, we're gonna go ahead and before we do that though, switch to heading mode so it doesn't break anything out here. CDI VOR1 and that's what we're gonna be interested in. So what VOR are we gonna be following here? Well, if you remember from our piece of paper we were looking at just a few moments ago, we were looking at a VOR27. So you can see if we wanna intercept that radial, we really need to bring ourselves closer to the east in order to safely do it. So I'm gonna go ahead and point my plane over here to the east. And as this plane starts uh, swinging over in that general direction, I'm going to go ahead and bop the nav button as well. So that it starts holding this as soon as we get a little bit closer to it. All right. So now that we got those couple things out of the way, let's take a look at where we're going to be going next. So we're going to be following this here. This is the 027 radial. Actually, it's not the 027 radial. Anybody who knows anything about VORs will tell you, in fact, radios come from the VOR station. We're basically following a reverse course on a radial, the 207 radial in this particular case. So what we're going to do is we're going to cruise along here. Uh, this is our initial approach fix is going to be at Rince intersection. So Rince is going to be 5.6 nautical miles away from Groton. So with that information, let's go ahead and come down to our quick PFD here, switch on the DME so we can double check to see what our current distance is to that station. All right, now that we know that our distance is like this, we know that when this says 5.6, we'll be crossing the Rince intersection. So if we come over on this side real quick, I notice that we need to be at an altitude of 1,800 feet before we get to Rince. Now, we got about 16.2, so that's uh, almost about 11 miles to get down to that altitude. So we can really, really take our time getting down there if we want to. I'm gonna go ahead and get there nice and early because there's nothing but water underneath us right now, which of course is the worst place to be ever because if something goes terribly wrong with the airplane, I hope you like to swim. So now that that's all set, let's go ahead and get ourselves descending here. We'll just do a very, very simple vertical speed descent here. Let's see, we are seven minutes and 41 seconds away. We need to lose about 2,000 feet. Seven into two is about 350 feet per minute. So uh, if we want to be nice and gentle, we could set this about 400 feet per minute and we'll be there with plenty of time to spare, which is exactly what we're hoping to do here. So now what's gonna happen is because we've set our CDI to VOR, as soon as we start to get a little bit closer to this radio, I'll go ahead and hide the screen real quick. Uh, you'll be able to go ahead and see that this plane will start taking ourselves a bit of a left turn. If anything, I'm actually going to kind of intercept this left turn a little bit, although I think the computer's already grabbed onto it. Yeah, the autopilot's already latched onto it. So let's go ahead and take a look at what makes a VOR approach non-precision. Uh, the reason it's non-precision is on account of the fact that we do not have any glide slope information, which means, unfortunately for us, that this uh, really gross cloud here, we have to figure out where the ground is on our own which is kind of interesting because it's basically a process of setting a timer and checking an altitude. So there's really not a lot to it. So let's go ahead and get those pieces all set up now. So I'm gonna go to the back button, I'm gonna press the timer ref. I'm gonna go over here, I'm gonna go ahead and set my timer. Now, what does my timer need to be set to? Well, let's take a look. On the bottom of this little chart, you'll see this thing that says knots, minutes, seconds. This simply says final approach fix, which if you remember is going to be this precision, rinse to the ground, missed approach point, will take at 90 knots, three minutes and 36 seconds. So if I come over here and set this to three minutes and 36 seconds, I will have the ability, whoa, <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess uh, Microsoft uh, doesn't necessarily want me to be dialing this in. <laughs> oh, boy. Oh, Microsoft, this is my head right now, right now, uh, as you can probably imagine. So, unfortunately, we'll come back to this. Now, is it going to let me do it this? Okay. 
So you're going to have to use my uh, you know, best opinion here. Well, basically, we'll go ahead and set a timer on my phone for 3 minutes and 36 seconds. And we'll uh, hope that that's a little bit more reliable than the good folks over here at Microsoft are. Again, half the fun is uh, learning how to deal with the fun, so to speak. And the real plan, of course, now, uh, what makes these things super interesting is the fact that more often than not, things don't work correctly. They're not quite this bad, but uh, for sure, they definitely aren't perfect. Just uh, one of those things you just kind of think about. But anyway, now that that's been said, um, we know we know that Nerdy Nuts is going to take us 3 minutes and 36 seconds to go from rinse all the way down to the ground. Now remember that is ground speed. That is not air speed. So if we're coming at 90 and it turns out our true ground speed is significantly more, we have to play with the throttle quite a bit in order to make sure that our ground speed agrees. So now that we know that our rough course and everything's been pre-selected and we're ready to go, we're going to be at the right altitude, we now need to think about how fast we need to go down. Now if you take a look at the diagram, you can see here that at a 027 at a 3.09, which is extra steep by the way, that's very steep, we know that from rinse to our missed approach point, which is just shy of the runway here at 500 feet, is going to be a total distance of 3.9 nautical miles, and that is going to take us 3 minutes and 36 seconds. So now you have to sit there and uh, use your big brain and go, well, uh, how far do we know? What, what is our vertical speed going to be? Well, let's try it out. So if we know, uh, I'm going to bring up a calculator real quick so you can come in and see it. So we know for a fact that we're going to be starting at Rince intersection, which is 5.6 nautical miles away, and it's going to take three and a half minutes to get there. So let's go ahead and try that out. 5.6 divided by, like I said, 3.5 means we need to be descending at 1.6. 1.6 watts. So now that's where it gets a little bit interesting. Now 1.6, uh, that's the ratio. 3.5, ah, what, what, what does this mean? Oh, these maths. Well, the good news is there's a quick and easy way to do this. And uh, the trick to this is basically take a look at your speed. Uh, if you're coming in at 3 degrees, that usually means you take half your speed, add a couple of zeros, and that's going to get you descending effectively. Unfortunately for us, we know that this is actually slightly steeper than 3 degrees. We also know what our ground speed's going to be. So instead of using 450 feet per minute, we'll use about 500 feet per minute, which should get us coming down pretty nicely. So I'm taking a look here. Um, you can see we're um, about 7.1 nautical miles from our initial point. Oh, <laughs> there's not much to see here. So um, what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to slow the plane down. And the moment we cross 1,800 feet, we're going to tell the aircraft to start descending at 400, 500 feet per minute and an airspeed of 90 knots. So now before we get to rinse, as you can see very clearly how close we're getting to it, let's just go ahead and do a mental check to make sure everything is set correctly. I've got my uh, cell phone out. Uh, you can't see it, of course, but I've got it at 3 minutes and 36 seconds. I'm going to start coming down to 90 knots because I want to make sure when I cross that 5.6 point that the aircraft is going the expected speed that we want it to be traveling at for the purposes of our descent here. So that's looking pretty good right about there. It's about 90 knots. 5.6. Let's go ahead and arm. Remember, you're going to arm it to your minimum. Now notice our ground speed here is 97, so we really need to be approaching at 81. 5.6, let's go. Going down, one, two, three, four, five. Heading down, all right, here we go. So now I'm looking over at my ground speed, which is 93. We want our ground speed to be as close to 90 as we can get it. Now that I'm going downhill, I'm gonna go ahead and put down one notch of flaps also. This is always highly recommended when you're dealing with small planes and things like this. So we need to maintain about 500 feet per minute and about 90 knots ground speed. And I've already started my timer on the phone. So here's how this works now. We're going to be looking out the window. Now, we're going to be hoping and hoping and hoping and hoping and hoping that we can find the end of the runway. Uh, when we find the end of the runway, we need to go ahead and double it, go ahead and land on it. Now, if we hit over on this side 500 feet, by the way, if you're wondering where I'm getting the 500 feet from, that's that number right there. Uh, we know that if we hit 500 feet and or my timer expires, that we missed. And we have to try to land this plane again, which means missed approach. Speaking of missed approach, uh, let's see what the missed approach procedure actually is for this airport. So it looks to me like if uh, we do have a missed approach, uh, we need to go take a right on the, what do we call this? This is the 6-2 radial. And we're going to go out until we get the Babbitt intersection, which is Groton 5.7. So that's not going to be too bad. Basically, point ourselves at 62. And uh, once you hit 5.7 DMA, you're going to go ahead and hold until you come back around and do it again. So fortunately, that's a pretty straightforward approach. I'm just going to double check the altitude, 200 feet, Groton 62, Babbitt intersection, check, chickity check, chickity checked. All right, so now we're going to continue our descent here. I'm doing exactly 90 knots. We're coming down at about 500 feet per minute, which like I said, is about what we want it to be. Remember, this is a slightly steep approach. So usually 450 would be closer. Taking a look down at my stopwatch, I'm looking at uh, 2 minutes and 25 seconds right now, but everything is uh, going pretty smooth so far. 
So looking out my window, I can already see the end of the runway, which means my nasty approach here was actually not required to go all the way down to the ground. Now, there's another thing I want to point out here, and that's the fact that if you look closely, our runway is not aligned with our approach. This is actually very, very, very common with non-precision approaches. The non-precision approach's job is to get you down to the ground. It's not to get you on the ground. If you want one of those, you're going to have to do uh, either an RNAV or an ILS approach. So looking out the window now, you can see we're still tracking this radial. Remember, the radial is on this side of the airport, as weird as that's going to be, and it's basically going to put us in an offset. So our minimums is 500 feet. I'm looking out the window. We're still doing 90 knots here. I've got a minute 42 on the timer. You can see it's already flashing at me. Now, when you hit that minimum, remember, you're not supposed to go under that minimum. That's your little safety margin. We need to start planning immediately for our missed approach, which, like I said, is going to put us on the 62 radial, and it's going to take us up to 2,000 feet. So now that we've already captured the altitude, I'm just going to dial in 2,000 feet. And like I said, of course, if we missed it completely, we can go ahead and do that. So now we're coming down to minimums. I'm looking out the window. I can see the runway. I'm going to go ahead and bring in my next two notches of flaps. We're going to go ahead and land the plane using conventional technique. That was all there was to that particular approach. Now, fortunately for us on this approach today, we well managed to find the runway pretty much right away. Yeah, we're hitting it at a bit of a funky angle, but welcome to non-precision approaches. They're always at a funky angle. Now, of course, the sketchiest of all sketchy uh, non-precision approaches is going to be your ADF approach. Those require a little bit of finesse, and uh, I don't want to call it a lot of luck but there's a reason why the minimums for those are like a thousand feet so we're just going to line ourselves up i'm oh, coming a little fast here but that's all right notice we've drifted off of the radial remember the uh, vor station itself is actually right there in front of us so it's not going to be in line with the runway which is again like i said non-precision now believe it or not at this airport there's a really really nice rnav approach that does everything i just did but it does it completely precise so it basically have aligned me up at the end of the runway here dropped me on that gigantic number five which i am now drifting a little off to the side to approaching and that would have made it for a much 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 easier time let's go ahead and make this landing a little bit softer than when we did the other one i'm getting a little rusty and down on the wheels nice i always like to stop before the thousand footers if i can help it and we did lovely all right hopefully this encourages you to go try out a vor approach like i said they're not too bad oh there's the timer so you can see just how incredibly close that was. So again, the math proves itself almost perfectly. So again, hopefully this encourages you to run out and try a VOR approach. Um, remember, they're non-precision, which means you can't have extreme minimums. If uh, it looks like this outside, oh, see, that's not even that bad. Uh, if, you know, it looks like this all the way down to the deck. Obviously, this is probably not the preferred approach. But then again, on uh, some remote airports, this is the only approach you have at your disposal. Other than that, enjoy.